So I wrote a very special word in my hand. And I want to share it with you in just a little bit. But first, let me share with you that I live in Reno, Nevada, and that I am in love with Lake Tahoe. If you don't know, here are some quick facts. It's over two million years old. It's over a mile high. It's deeper than the Empire State Building is tall. And it is the largest alpine lake in North America. One of its famous visitors was Mark Twain, and he described it as a noble sheet of blue water, to be exact. It's a sheet of blue water over 21 miles long. And the reason I'm being precise about its length, it's because I've attempted to swim across Lake Tahoe twice. The decision to try and do this for the first time was one that I made during the deepest, darkest days of the pandemic. It was March 2020, after the world had shut down and before the vaccines. Everybody was losing somebody they loved, including me. I lost three dear friends all in the same week. As you can imagine, it was devastating. I was paralyzed, almost entirely overcome with grief. And then I started looking for a way to emerge from the sadness that enveloped me. And I realized that my way out of what I was feeling and dealing with those huge losses was to dedicate the next months accomplishing something way beyond myself. It was then that I began thinking about swimming across Lake Tahoe. What if I could break a world record and become the first Latina to swim across Lake Tahoe? Here's the thing. I knew how to swim, but by no means I was a competitive swimmer nor had I tried or thought about trying in long distance open water swim, and this was a daunting task. 21 miles, 65 degrees, freezing wide open water, no wetsuit. At this point, you're probably wondering why I decided to do this. I had already began training when I asked myself the same question. This was a huge thing to do, but could I connect the swim and make it mean something? Could I connect it to everything and to everyone that I was mourning? And beyond that, could I connect this swim to the world? What if I dedicated each mile of the swim to a different social cause? There would be a mile for mental health. There would be miles for cancer and COVID-19 victims and survivors. There would be miles for family and female empowerment, hunger and human trafficking. There would be a mile for prayer. It was then that the swim gained momentum in ways I never imagined Never thought possible. Sponsors came together, businesses came together to support my training. Others donated to the special social causes I was swimming for. I got to swim with open water swimmers nationally and internationally. Family, friends, neighbors, even strangers started to follow my training on social media. As the days went by, the date of the swim got closer and closer. Check this out. It would be 463 days of training, 65 degree water, 21 miles, 21 social causes, 
and at the end of it all, one tough swim. So I began imagining what it would be like when the swim was all done. To be standing on that distant shore, exhausted, elated, with the swim behind me. I thought what it would be like achieving what I had set out to do and sharing this very special moment with everyone who was behind me and the swim. I could almost taste it, the sense of accomplishment. Unfortunately, things did not go as planned. The date of the swim was set for August 7, 2021, and I was ready. But by the time I got in the water that evening, the air was thick with smoke from the wildfires that were raging through California and at the southern tip of Lake Tahoe. The air quality was terrible. And I could have called off the swim then, but didn't, despite the terrible conditions. I didn't want to fail anyone. I felt like people were counting on me. So I decided to attempt the swim and gave it my best. But even just a few miles into the swim, I could tell I wouldn't be able to complete it. I could feel it in my lungs. I knew I would have to stop, but kept going, inhaling ashes. Ignoring how hard it was to breathe and how cold I was. So I pushed on through the dark, smoky night. I pressed on thinking of all the people who had made my journey their own and the 21 social causes I was swimming for. Okay, I told myself, swim for 10 minutes. And then swim for 10 more minutes after that. I kept that up for three hours. And when I couldn't take it any longer, I pulled myself out of the water. It was one of the hardest, most heartbreaking things I've ever done in my life. I felt I had failed everyone. And worse than that, I felt like I had failed myself. The sense of failure that comes with not being able to reach a goal is going to be familiar with most people. All of us have personal, sometimes crushing experiences of coming up short and of the sense of failure that comes with not hitting a goal. It's how we've been trained to think about ourselves, about what counts, about what matters. We are a society that focuses on productivity. One that sets a priority on outcomes over anything else. Worse than that, we tell ourselves that we can't get anything done without goal setting and to measure our own worth based on our ability to reach them. And yes, my friends, it starts early. From grade school to business school, we've come to see goal setting as the major source of motivation and to believe that people who have specific, more difficult goals perform better than others. We defined our success and failure, our own worth, 
in the same way. It's a way of thinking that's become so ingrained in us that we've stopped questioning it, but we should. Goal setting theory has not always been the central way of understanding productivity. In fact, it's relatively recent and it did not become a thing until the late 1960s. Believe it or not, it was a new idea. What we believed back then was that setting goals causes stress and stressing folks out was bad for business because it would create a negative impact on productivity. What we believed back then was that happier people were the most productive. Imagine that. Things changed when a pair of psychologists did a series of studies and found out that goal setting increases productivity by an average of 14%. That sounds like a lot, and in a way it is. If you think of an eight hour workday, it's like adding an hour of work a day. But what does that miss? What do people do when that 14% of their day when they're not focused on results, not measuring their own selves of word in terms of their productivity? I'll tell you what that misses. What that misses is most of the things that matter. What that misses is the beauty of the journey and what we learned along the way how it transforms us. That is what the open water had to teach me. When we live life focused on results, on setting and reaching goals, and then in setting them and reaching them again and again, what we're really doing is setting ourselves up for failure. We end up trying to control everything and we lose sight of what's important. High achievers might look better on a spreadsheet, but how are we doing as human beings? Now, I won't lie to you. On that smoke-filled sad day when I got out of the water, it took me months to get over it. But I did get over it. And eventually, I started the journey of building myself back up. And I decided to attempt the swim again with one very important difference. This time, I made up my mind to celebrate every stage of the process, whether I completed the swim or not. Every training session was a celebration, and for the first time in my life, I accepted the fact that I could not control everything. On my second attempt, the experience was completely transformed. That is the message of the open water. The transformation that comes from dedicating yourself to something greater and the process of celebrating every step along the way, whether or not you arrive at your destination. Are you guys to see the special word I wrote in my hand? That word is celebrate. And I want to leave you with this. Find your open water. And once you've found it, launch yourself across it. Strive to reach to that distant shore and find joy in the journey, whether you arrive or not. Thank you.